Hello, ladies and gents. You people have been certainly having some absolutely amazing games lately, and thankfully you also thought about sending them in, for which I'm truly thankful, regardless whether your replay eventually made it on the stage or not. Now, talking about amazing games, I think that today's replay right here, courtesy of MKS Panzer, might very well be actually one of the highest base experience scores to be ever featured on the channel, breaching that ultra-rare 2000 base experience milestone. So, who's ready for some non-stop Soviet tank destroyer action that surprisingly does not include the BL-10? All of you? Then check this out! Alright, so here we are in our SU-101, this time around in a standard battle on Redshire. Oh yeah, this gonna be good. We are in a tank destroyer and we are on Redshire, which is the perfect combination, pretty much the same amazing feeling when you get Prohorovka as a light tank. Now as we move into position up there on the ridge line, which is very typical for this map, let's have first a very quick look at the uh, matchmaking. Which is not half bad actually, but a third of the teams are tier 8, the rest are tier 7, some tier 6s, so nothing this machine would have any problems with really. Now you don't see these machines running around that much on the battlefield and that's because that's the alternate line to the very popular line with the BL-10 guns, with the uh, ISU-152, the Object 704, and of course the Object 268 which is probably the route that most people are going to take, although I have to say there are some real gems on the other side as well. Now these machines, all non-turreted tank destroyers, are all about the gun performance. Pretty good rate of fire we are able to churn out over 10 rounds a minute, which is not too bad at all, with 250 average alpha damage and 183mm of average penetration. And we also have really good aim time, 1.6 seconds, and fantastic accuracy, 0.32 meters, so this is basically an amazing little sniper with pretty good rate of fire. It's not the same, I smack you in the face for all your hit points, kind of BL-10 fun, but it's really reliable enjoyment. The only real downside, apart from not having a turret in these machines, is the quite punishing gun depression, actually. You have only 4 degrees at your disposal, so you will have to work these ridge lines rather carefully. Now, as things finally start to get rolling, and trust me, once the action kicks in, it will be non-stop till the end, let's just see how the team does at the moment. Well, so far we are actually up by one tank, but have a look at the map. Basically, both the east and also the west are about to overrun, and that's partially because we have an advantage on tank destroyers, while they have an advantage on mediums and, um, and heavies. So of course, they will just simply use their numerical advantage and run over our guys, while we are all happy campers up on the ridge line. That's said, finally we have the first customer here, and we start off with the miss and the bounce. <laughs> After I praise this machine for its accuracy, but, have a look at that rate of fire, and really make short work of the opponents. Oh, and here we go, that's what we have been waiting for. So, the enemy heavies have pushed through, and now they are making a mistake by not continuing, instead just messing about there, right in our line of fire. This is Christmas, so let's make sure we put that gun to good use, and get that DPM rolling. The base DPM on this machine is over 2600 at tier 7, and this is pretty much the dream scenario. Oh, another low health target. Perfect, so that's a tier 7 and a tier 8 heavy tank that with. And we certainly won't have any problems going through the sides of those two IS-3As, which are in a platoon and definitely one of the more dangerous opponents. Now something that's also a little bit of a downside for this machine, and you did see that for a second, is the rather awkward gun traverse. Oops! <laughs> Talking about blind fires. 
eyes, three a burning there silently in the distance. Sweet. So the gun traverse is not the best. 8 degrees to the left, 8 degrees to the right, and 16 degrees overall. Can be a little bit tricky. Luckily, with your really good aim time, you will be ready to shoot shortly after you reposition yourself. Now it's not looking good, we are down by 4 tanks and... Whoa, what's the die is doing? Oh man, this is going quite badly. We are down to 2 tank destroyers, a light tank and a heavy tank and that IS is completely oblivious to the fact that he is basically moving into the line of fire of the remaining tank destroyers. This leopard is getting very cheeky. Uh, no, my friend, that won't be the solution. We are now on a roll. Suddenly, already at 6 kills and 3000 damage, we actually managed to pull back the scores. However, it is a full half Tiger P and then full half Weaker Max as well. <laughs> who is now completely history. Alright, moving in for the Tiger P. Come on, can we get around? Yes, we can. Well, my friend, you have just been outmaneuvered by a Turretless Tank Sawyer. Oh, that was a nasty bounce. Definitely want to aim these in sniper mode. Otherwise, you will get yourself in a lot of trouble with these bounces. But holy hell. How many shots did we put in there in this, in this last minute? That was something indeed. Okay, so let's not chill just yet. There is still an IS-3A up there. Well, pretty low health, but we still need to two-shot him. There is also a T-34-100 somewhere who just took out the Young Panther. So that means probably he is behind the IS-3A somewhere. The M12 didn't spot him yet, so I don't think he's hugging the red line. And of course, there is the Lorraine an artillery, and T37 could actually go for an artillery hunt here, but seems like he has other plans. So we have to be careful as well if we are engaging those two tanks, otherwise, we might get a really nasty surprise from above. Alright, this is not a bad position. We should be able to spot anybody cresting the ridge in front of us. Binoculars up. And now we wait. Stank destroyer ambush time and there we go. IS-3A up there, we switch actually to the few APCR shells we have. Which is a good decision. I'm really surprised that the IS-3A didn't fire until now. Oh, that's an unlucky bounce. Come on, aim it up. There we go, good result. It was absolutely worth taking the uh, taking the hit from the IS-3A in return of taking out the most important tank on the enemy team. And we were lucky enough so that the uh, artillery didn't smack us down as well. I don't think actually he actually fired. So that's rather interesting as well. Maybe he's on the way actually to join a find from up close and personal. This that could be a possible explanation. Right, well, we didn't spot him, so most probably he will be next to that house somewhere. And no fire is coming in even after knocking the tree over. Is he behind the house? Where are you? Oh no, he's actually next to it. Well, perfect. Oh, and we just found the artillery. So the guy was indeed moving up. That's a very tricky shot. Or, oh, right. Well, that was some sniping indeed. 0.32 meters dispersion. And we even got the last kill for the ninth kill in this match. That was some roll indeed. I have to say, while this might have been Redshire Ridgeline Sniping 101, it was bloody well executed. Great marksmanship, good ammo and target selection and nice positioning were certainly all contributing to this ace tanker, Radley Walters, high caliber tank sniper and top gun result. Looking at the team result, it's no question that the tier 7 tank destroyers carried this match from both sides 
with our hero finishing on top with close to 5000 damage, 9 kills and over 2000 base experience. Pretty damn impressive. And last but not least we fired 28 rounds in these about 8.5 minutes, hitting 26 and penetrating 22 of them. And as we barely touched our APCR reserves, even with a standard account we actually finished the game with a rather sweet 16,000 net credit profit. Right, so this was today's epic run in the tier 7 Soviet tank destroyer, the SU-101. Many thanks for MKS Panzer for sending this one in, and massive congratulations to a great tank destroyer game played. I hope you guys had also fun watching it, I know I did, and if that's the case, many thanks for considering giving this a like or sharing it. Up next we will sail out in World of Warships for the last Wet Funny Moments compilation of the year by tomorrow, and then I'm back on Thursday with a special episode looking at those real-life Swedish tanks in preparation for the upcoming brand new tech tree. Thank you very much for watching everyone, and I look forward to seeing you again in one of the next videos.